Hi, this is Betsy Brantner Smith with Police One, and I'm here with Van Postel, who's a, the lead instructor with Purses Medical. And Van, you do some uh, absolutely life saving work for law enforcement as well as uh, other first responder professions. Let's talk about what you do. Okay. Um, my full time job is with the City of Houston Fire Department. I'm a captain in suppression. I've been a paramedic for 16 years. And then my part-time job is with the Harris County Sheriff's Office uh, in their tactical medicine program as a uh, medic for the special response team. And then I teach for Purses Medical uh, for the tactical first aid program for law enforcement. Now, Purses has some uh, terrific life-saving products. And, and what you personally do with them is you take those products and you teach people like me how to use them. Right. And, uh, and um, this is the thing, and, and, and you know because you've been in public safety for decades like me, back in the, in the 70s and even into the early 80s, we had cops that were dying because we weren't using buddy aid, right. we weren't teaching uh, self-aid, right. and so we were just waiting for the paramedics to show up, right. and we were dying when we shouldn't have been dying. Right. Um, then we, we, we learned some tactical medicine, but the problem is we got scared of tourniquets. And, and then there was a great period of time there where we said, oh, those are scary, and uh, they do more harm than good, all of that kind of stuff. Um, now, you guys have addressed all of that in your products as well as in your training. Let's talk about that. Yes, um, tourniquets have come a long ways, like you said, since the 70s and 80s. Um, they, you know, back in the Vietnam era and, and shortly after that, people were still making tourniquets where, with rope, sticks, uh, wire, and that's where the, the tissue uh, was really being cut, per se, around the injury and they were having to amputate limbs uh, because of that tissue damage from the, from the tourniquets that they were making up. Now they have wider bands, uh, surgeons use them uh, in, in surgery for hours at a time. Uh, they really come a long way. Uh, they're very inexpensive. Uh, so having one on you um, is recommended. And uh, putting it on as easy as 30 seconds um, is, is, could be a life savior. Well, and, and here's the thing with your products is just like much of our other training in both the fire service and the police service is you need repetitions, repetitions, right. repetitions, repetitions. Right. And, and as we say, you know, perfect practice makes permanent. Right. Right. And that's one of the things I know that you do in your classes. Yes. And, and with the training that you do, um, you know, they're not just sitting in a classroom board. It's fun, isn't it? Yes, it is. And too many, too many police officers, uh, they might carry some medical equipment in their vehicle or in their go bag, and then I ask them the big question, when's the last time you looked at it? When's the last time you opened it up? What's actually in that kit? Um, and then you have that blank stare of, uh, I'm not sure what's in there. Um, so you're, you're right, being familiar with it, practicing it, it, we should practice that type of stuff, that type of medical interventions just as much as we practice firearm training or, you know, magazine changes and stuff like that. It should be just, we should be just as proficient with it uh, as, as firearms in my opinion. Well, and, and in a lot of people's opinion, because the bottom line is, is we need to be able to, you know, save our brothers and sisters and we also need to be able to save ourselves and in, in, right. in these days of, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing more ambushes, um, we're winning more gunfights, but we're in more gunfights, and, uh, and so we need to be able to, and I know this is one of the things that your products uh, enable us to do, is to patch ourselves up and keep, keep going in the fight. Yes. You know, and that's one of the things you talk about in your classes, right? It's yes. just because you're shot, just because you're cut, just because you're hurt, we don't stop the fight. That's right. Our first thing that we teach them is return fire, take cover to a position that, that you can safely, provide self-aid, continue in the fight, and then extract yourself as best you can to a better position where you're not injured further. And you teach uh, personnel who come to your class, again, how to properly use the equipment, not only tourniquets, but right. pressure bandages. Right, we hammer like them that. on tourniquets. They get, they, they get tired after eight hours of being hit with tourniquets because uh, I find that it's, it's the quickest way to fix one of the worst injuries. So why not practice on something like that, that you know, you can, you can be, from, from a severe arterial bleed, you can be lightheaded within 30 seconds, unconscious in a minute, and dead in three. So by deploying a tourniquet, 
putting it on yourself within 30 seconds, you've now stopped the bleeding, you reduce the chance of becoming lightheaded or going unconscious, and you can stay in the fight and, and protect yourself and others. And that's ultimately our goal, is to stay in the fight exactly. and to win. We, we want to win the fight and, and get home at the end of our shift exactly. safe and sound. Yes. I think what's great about Persis Medical is they've got somebody like you in charge of the training who is working both sides of the public mm -hmm. safety angle. That's fantastic, police and fire. Mm -hmm. You also have, you have medical experts, scientists, um, and you have the equipment to go with the training. Right. So this is a fantastic product and, right. and uh, you know, we appreciate everything that you're doing to keep public safety safe. Thank you.